In this video we're going to explore a very important concept that's really at the heart of calculus and that is rates of change. And the idea really is that uh, you know calculus in, in essence or differential calculus really just focuses on one main idea and so this video serves to try to motivate that idea so that you understand um, what the real what the real goal of calculus is in, in its uh, in its analysis. So, first I, I like to start with this example here. It says, on your drive to New York from Boston, you take note of the odometer at two different times. At 1 p.m. you know you are 30 miles from home. At 5 you arrive to New York and you notice you're 270 miles from home. What was your average velocity for the trip? So, when you think about it, it's one o'clock now, you're, you're 30 miles from home, and then at 5 p.m. you notice you're 270 miles from home. Most people, even if they don't have you know good math skills or a math background or know nothing about calculus, would say, well, you know, I went 240 miles. I went 240 miles, and it's, you know, from one to four. You know, from one to four, it took me, um, that, that's four hours. So I went 240 miles in four hours. So that averages out to 240 divided by four. That's 60 miles per hour. Right? A pretty simple computation. Um, now, you probably didn't think of it this way, but what we really just calculated, if you, if you were to graph the, uh, graph my distance from home, as I've done here, you really just calculated the slope of a line. And so to see that, here's the, the x-axis down here. We'll let that be time in hours. So, you know, this is 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., and this will be your distance from home, miles from home. And so at 1, it looks like we're 30 miles from home, so I'm going to label this 30. And then at 5, we are 270 miles from home. So what you probably didn't notice was that, or you probably didn't think of, was what we just calculated was really just the slope of this line. And so this line I'm about to draw, this line has a special name. This line I just drew. So again, let's just note that the slope of this line is what we just calculated, right? The the slope of this line is change in y over change in x. So my change in my change in y was this distance here, right? That was my change in my um, my change in y, and that was two seventy minus thirty, right? It's just this distance here. And my change in x here. Now I'm using x um, and y simply because I know that's more re you know relatable to you. And I when I say slope of line, you probably think change in y over change in x. But uh, we could use t change in t. Um, but that is just uh, five minus one. And we know that's four hours. And we know that that's two hundred forty. So hopefully you're convinced that we just calculated the slope of a line. Now this line is very special. It's called a secant line. Okay, any line that sort of links two points on a graph is called a, sink, a secant line. And so what we've sort of just noted is that in general my average rate of change, average rate of change, rate of change of some quantity no, I, I didn't say average velocity because this this example could be, uh, you know, this example would be just uh, <clears throat> just as relevant if I changed my units instead of miles from home. I could say, you know, in four hours, you know, the number of people entering an auditorium was, you know, went from thirty it was thirty at one o'clock and two hundred and seventy at five o'clock. What's the rate of uh, people entering the auditorium? That's a different rate of change. It's not velocity, um, but the mathematics would be the same. So my average rate of change 
is well one way to think of it is just it's just the slope of the secant line Now when I say average rate of change, obviously I need to say over some time interval, right? The average rate of change from 1 o'clock to 5 o'clock, or in that 4 hours. But you want these two ideas to sort of land in the same place in your head. Okay, so slope of the secant line is the average rate of change. And you can think of it, you know, as change in y over change in x. And so now what I'm going to talk about is the, the fundamental question that motivated or that was at the heart of calculus, and that is, let's say I wanted to know uh, what my speed was, my instantaneous speed, at 1 o'clock. So think about that question for a second and how it differs from the average, the average velocity one. I want to know my instantaneous velocity at 1 o'clock. So think about it for a minute. You're in your car, right? You're in your car and you just, at 1 o'clock, you freeze time and you look at the speedometer to, t to determine how, how fast you're going. Um, the, the, the reason this question is so hard to answer, or historically was very difficult to answer, is because we don't have any formula for it. You know, I, when I, as soon as I talk about instantaneous velocity, you know, your velocity at an instant, the paradox is that we've frozen time in our whole notion of motion and speed is the, is based on time moving, right? So in an instant at one o'clock, you know what's my change in 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 velo uh, my change in distance is zero, and my change in time is zero. So we get the quantity zero over zero. Now zero over zero is not zero. It's called an indeterminate form. It means it can be anything. Okay, that that zero over zero could be anything. It could be one. It could be ten. It could be infinity. It could be anything. So 0 over 0 is not useful information. If you ever see 0 over 0 when you're com uh, computing, that means you need more information. Okay. So this is how mathematicians handled the problem. They said, okay, well, we, we know this question has an answer, right? We, you can imagine being in your car and, and it freezing at 1 o'clock and you're just looking at the speedometer. The way they handled it was they said, well, let's not calculate the, let's not try to calculate this directly. Let's do this instead. Let's just start calculating the slope of the secant line, or calculate the average rate of change, but over a smaller and smaller time interval. So for instance, you could say, well, to get a better sense of how fast I was going at 1 o'clock, I could just say, well, what's the, uh, what's the um, average rate of change from 1 to 2 o'clock? That would just be the slope of this black line right here. Now that's, now from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock, that's a whole hour, so that's not really that helpful in figuring out, in determining what my speed was at 1 o'clock. But why stop there? Why don't I just say that I can calculate my average velocity, average velocity um, on the time interval from 1 to 1 o'clock to like 1, uh, 1 o'clock in 30 seconds, so like from 1 o'clock to like right here. That would give me a different point on the graph. I'm going to erase this here. That would give me a different point on the graph. It would be like right here, and you'd be calculating the slope of the secant line from 1 o'clock to 1 o'clock and 30 seconds. And so, if you just continue to do that, continue to, to calculate the average rate of change from 1 o'clock to maybe 1 o'clock in 15 seconds, 1 o'clock to 1 o'clock in 1 second, if you just continue to continually do that, what you get is a bunch of, I'll try to draw them, you get a bunch of secant lines. So this is a, just imagine these are all the secant lines as I start to move, move my time interval to be smaller and smaller. And in in the limit, what you end up getting is the slope of the what's called the tangent line, and the tangent line is the line that just touches the graph at that one point. And that is what we visually use to interpret our instantaneous rate of change. So that black line there is called the tangent line.
Okay, because eventually, as you start decreasing that time interval, you you decrease it to such a point where you're really just touching that touching the, the, the curve at that one point. So that's the tangent line. So conceptually, you want to know that the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the slope of the tangent line. at a point. Okay, in this case the point was at, you know, at one o'clock there. So whatever the slope of that tangent line is, whatever the slope of that line is, that will tell me what my instantaneous rate of change is, what my instantaneous velocity is at one o'clock. So identifying what we want to calculate is one thing. Actually finding an equation or a formula that would help us calculate that is another thing. So that'll be in a, in a different lesson. But hopefully this um, this lesson gave you two big, two fundamental ideas which sort of are going to launch our exploration of calculus. That is, average rate of change is the slope of the secant line, which just links two points on the curve. An instantaneous rate of change is the slope of the tangent line, and that is the line that just grazes the curve at that one point.